Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. A very warm welcome from London in the UK. Here is today's news about electric cars and the future of transport. My name is Martin Lee. This is your EV News Daily for Friday, the 30th of March. 2018. Coming up on the show today, we'll talk about automakers teaming up with American states for a new marketing campaign and the new laws in Beverly Hills that ban plugins. But first of all, Tesla's earning call uh, will be next week as the quarter ends. And investors will want to know whether the Model 3 production reached 2,500 cars per week. Which was the guidance? And the answer is... Well, maybe. I've read a lot of websites in the last couple of days and lots of blogs and watched lots of videos, most of which, by the way, are from people who really know what they're talking about. These are EV experts. They write about it day in, day out. But here's the thing. We've not heard from Tesla. Now, Bloomberg say they're making 200 Model 3s a day, and they claim to have an email from Doug Field. He's the senior VP of engineering to employees at the Fremont factory, which was sent last week. This is the contents of the email Bloomberg claimed to have. It says this, The world is watching us very closely to understand one thing. How many Model 3s can Tesla build in one week? This is the critical moment in Tesla's history, and there are a number of reasons it's so important. You should pick the one that hits you in the gut and makes you want to win. We set high goals at Tesla, but I know we can do this. If we keep climbing from 300 through the end of the week, it will be an incredible victory. Your friends and family will read about it in the news. End quote. And that is supposedly the email uh, that one of their senior VPs sent to the staff, which Bloomberg say they got their hands on. And lots of stories kind of spiralled out of that, that one story. So here's the conclusion that most people come to by the tesla earnings call next week if they can get to any kind of number near two and a half thousand for model threes per week that's the number they will give for what they are at at the moment so they're making two thousand model threes a week by middle of next week say they're making 300 a day they might just times that by seven and say we're making 2100 a week but either way, we haven't heard from Tesla. I mean, look, we love, we love some speculation, but none of this is concrete. And it's all, it all seemed to come from one Bloomberg report who, you know, obviously very good journalists, good sources and all that kind of stuff. But we just haven't heard from Tesla. So you kind of have to take it with a pinch of salt. We'll see next week how many they made. We know lots of VINs are being registered. We know lots of anecdotal evidence. And whether you're an investor or not, I'm not an investor in Tesla. I'm not a Model 3 reservation holder. Uh, they've obviously had a pretty tough week on the stock market this week with a 8% drop and then a 7% drop in consecutive days. And today was what up a couple of percent. But, you know, you're talking billions of dollars being wiped off companies here. This is serious business to be speculating about. Let's wait until next week and we'll see how many they're making. Well, The Verge report that a new marketing campaign is on the way to persuade Americans to give batteries a chance. It's called a Drive Change, Drive Electric. Catchy. Uh, 16 major automakers, they say, are teaming up with seven northeastern states to support a new advertising venture uh, with the aim of getting Americans to buy more electric cars. The goal isn't to make everyone a Tesla owner. Organizers, organizers are going to place a heavy focus on hybrid vehicles. Uh, both standard hybrids, soft hybrids, as you know, you and I might call them, and plug-in hybrids in the interest of casting as wide a net as possible. Now, The Verge says, uh, we believe that people, they quote, we believe that people owe it to themselves to get behind the wheel of an EV, says Steve Douglas. He's the Senior Director of Environmental Affairs at the Alliance for Automobile Manufacturers in the USA. Uh, he says they should talk to people who drive electric cars because we believe an electric car should be on the short list. Yeah, absolutely good. More marketing campaigns. Put some more money behind getting people driving electric cars. Once, you know what, once you've been in one, that's the key. We have a thing here in the UK, there's in the, in the sort of in the middle of of Great Britain, if you like, in a place called Milton Keynes. It's a lovely place. Uh, there is somewhere that all the car manufacturers got together and given them the electric cars they make for people to go along and drive them for 20 minutes or take one out for a few days or a week even and hire one. Once you get inside an EV, then you get the acceleration and you get the silence. And you get how nice it is to drive. And then you go and buy one. 
Well, earlier in the week, we told you about the new workhorse van that's been unveiled in San Francisco yesterday. Dwayne Hughes, the workhorse president and COO, added rolling out this history making fleet of N Gen vans is something that myself and the entire team are extremely proud of. This deployment is the first step towards transitioning the largest growing segment in the truck business in a zero emission stronghold. Workhorse say that the new uh, N Gen electric van has a range of 100 miles, that's 160 km. On a single charge, that should be enough for nearly all delivery routes, actually. They can even add a 75-mile range extender if they really want to. But you can do most of those urban deliveries, those last-mile things, on Pure Electric alone. Well, moving on, and Hyundai's Genesis premium brand, if you like, which is standing on its own two feet more and more these days, have unveiled their Essentia concept at the New York Auto Show. And holy moly... Is this a gorgeous car? I mean, you've seen good-looking cars, right? But it's not until you go and look at this picture online. We'll put a link to it in the show notes. It is just beautiful. It's like poster on the wall when you're a teenager. Beautiful. Now, Top Speed website writes about this new stunner at the 2018 New York International Auto Show as the latest concept from Hyundai's standalone luxury sub-brand, Genesis. The Essentia, uh, it's framed as an all-electric car, Two doors, grand touring model, packed with the very latest convenience features. Mm, oh man, it does look so nice. It is just beautiful. It's only a concept, so come on, let's come and make it. Not that I'll ever afford one, but man, it's beautiful. You thought the, the new Tesla Roadster is beautiful. This is right up there. Well, Beverly Hills... Beverly Hills. I'll stress the Bev, because Beverly Hills love battery electric vehicles that would be pure bevs but not so much plug-ins a new report uh, that was all over the internet today but we took this report from green car reports uh, who said that as of monday coming april 2nd which is uh, easter monday here in the uk only battery electric cars are going to be allowed to park and plug in at any of beverly hills 35 public charging stations they're level two charges so you'll be around for a while if you want a full charge plug-in hybrids will not though. In fact, according to a press release describing the policy on uh, on Monday, plug-in hybrids in those spaces are going to be treated like conventional vehicles, which is to say if they're parked in one of the designated charging spots, whether they're charging or not, if they're a plug-in hybrid, they're going to be ticketed. Well, Beverly Hills will also impose a fee for charging, 25 cents per kilowatt hour on top of the parking fees and a $6 station fee after two hours, regardless of whether the vehicle is charging or not. When I came across this story yesterday, I popped a really quick poll on Twitter and after a couple of hours had 26 votes, I asked... Uh, should Beverly Hills prohibit plug-in hybrids using the public chargers? 58% of people said yes! Prioritise battery electric vehicles. And 42% said no, all plugs are fair plugs. Look, if you do own a pure electric car, it is frustrating when a plug-in is hogging a rapid charger. And these aren't rapids, these are level two chargers. But anyway, uh, certainly lots of uh, pure electric car ho- owners taking part in my little survey that uh, we put on Twitter. Right, final story. And SF Motors have revealed themselves this week. The company's backed by a Chinese investors and they show off two high-powered EVs in California yesterday. The SF5 and the SF7, they claim pre-orders are going to start in 2019. And the cars, which will have two, three or four motors and a range of more than three hundred miles. I love a concept car. Look, it's great that this week we've been talking about cars coming this year, like the Hyundai Kona on sale in North America by quarter four. But I love a concept car because most of them will fail, but some of them will just get made. Now, The Verge says that the drivetrain and battery technology apparently comes in large part from the company that SF Motors acquired last year called uh, Inevit. Now, Inevit was started by Martin Eberhard. Yeah, that name's familiar because he's the co-founder and former CEO of Tesla. He's the guy who clashed with Elon Musk during some of the company's really early, tough years. Now, Eberhard serves as the chief innovation officer for SF Motors. They have an R&D shop in Silicon Valley and others around the world. It's going to make SUVs in Indiana. They have their factories already, so they're on their way. The company bought an old manufacturing plant that used to pump out Hummer SUVs, is the article, and is currently retooling for production of EVs. Kick off around 50,000 
per year. I mean, they're big numbers, right? However, SF Motors is an American subsidiary of the Chinese vehicle company Socon. So it will also be able to make those cars in China in about triple the numbers. Now, China's a market that loves SUVs and is widely considered to be the next frontier for electric cars, says this Verge article, and that's where it ends. You would think that Martin Eberhard uh, would, at the unveiling of the SF5 and the SF7, he would be there himself and he would give it the big marketing push. But sadly, he only appeared in video form. They kind of like a figurehead at the moment. Everybody needs an Elon Musk, don't they? Well, that's the news for today. I'd love to spread the word about electric cars. If you can, share this with one person who might be interested. Every previous episode of the podcast on Google Play, on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, you, uh, tune in, and the blog at evnewsdaily.com. Com. Uh, catch up with us on Twitter at EV News Daily. Have a wonderful Friday. We've got a four day weekend here in the UK, so I'm off work for four days, uh, which is great. There'll be some DIY around the house, some painting and some tidying up because we moved house recently. But the podcast will appear every single day. Don't worry about that. Have a great Friday, and I'll catch you tomorrow. <laughs>